It is no longer news that ritual killing has become rampant among Nigerian youths, especially teenagers. It is indeed a source of concern. That is why it is important for us to talk about it and find a way to conquer this menace. Hello and welcome to Let's Talk. My name is Oluja Kemosako with the topic ritual killings among youth and young people precisely. Honorable Kenyinde Shuaga, founder and general secretary of Go Indigen Entertainment's professional firm, is my guest. But before we go deep in, in details to what we have to discuss this morning, today, I beg your pardon, I'd like to remind you to please subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on all of our social media platforms. And like I said, my guest is Honorable Kenyinde Shuaga. Thank you so much for coming on the show, sir. Good afternoon, Joke. How are you doing? Good afternoon, viewers. Thank you so, so much. Everything is fine. Okay. Now, ritual killing, like I said in my introduction, has become very rampant, especially in Nigeria. Now, we know ritual killing to be associated with the elderly, especially people who want to make money at all costs, mostly found among fathers, old people, um, people who want to just make end meet, ends meet um, by all means. Now, youth and teenagers have taken the button. How did we get here? Well, it's, uh, it's so unfortunate. It's, it's, a sad, it's, a, it's, a sad, uh, uh, it's a sad thing as it is right now in this climb. We, are, we see children, teenagers involved in rituals. It's, it's so sad. And how did we get here? It's uh, one of the uh, results of moral decadence, bad parenthood, and a lot of, uh, what would I say, a lack of leadership from the homes. It's, it, it, it's, it is very hard for us to hear in time past when we were growing up that somebody makes money with, with rituals. In fact, such people are, they are always classified as outcasts. With their money, they look respect, they lost respect, they lost dignity. Nobody sees them as anybody relevant in the society. But these days we worship money. Uh, the, the moral decadence are setting. Nobody cares to know how this person makes his money. And uh, the youth have lashed in on that. You see a lot of youth with flashy cars. Uh, people go to their parents' home with billions and millions of naira. The parents never bother to ask how manage or how far. So it has been it has been like this for I think for the past thirty years, where we lost it. Mm. You know that the the the, the, um, the issue of Yahoo Yahoo was also something that people were so much concerned about but now it's like um it has taken a new turn whereby we have underaged um children i can attribute to when uh, a society that does not respect source of wealth or that does not investigate source of wealth has another thing coming yeah. and that is where we are it is very sad in fact, this one happened in Abiyokuta. In fact, some very a few kilometers to my Abiyokuta home, where the 17, 18, 19 year old had the audacity to invite a girlfriend home. Yeah, I was actually, yeah, I was actually coming to that too. Yes. Because, um, <laughs> yes, it happened in my neighborhood in Abiyokuta. It's so sad. Yes. And then. Um, there are so many factors responsible for that. There's not justice in Nigeria. Because it is said that justice delayed is justice denied. When people are involved in so many crimes and their criminalities, and you don't, you don't get to see what happens to them at the end of the day, justice is not served. You, then the thing, the crimes and the criminality will persist. And that's what we are having now in Nigeria. It's so sad. A lot of people have been blaming the wood industries. Some are blaming the same. That is the truth. Nobody yeah, I'm actually coming to it. that. Because um, now, we, let's look at the responsibility. What actually is responsible for this dastardly act, even before we start blaming 
or apportioning blame as we may as it has been going around the media concerning Nollywood. But before we get there, what actually could be responsible for this dastardly act? Like I said, the, the primary responsibility uh, falls on the homes at the doorstep of bad parenting. The parents these days don't look at the upbringing of a child. The parents these days, or the kind of parents we've had in the past two decades, are apology parents. Don't forget that we have some baby mothers. We have teenagers, 14, 15, 16, 17 year old, that are able to be in school or to be learning a profession, now becoming mothers and fathers. We had in the past, when the politics started in Nigeria, where a common Okada, right? A, a common, uh, a, a young man that has no job, no source of livelihood, and the politician dashes them bike as empowerment, in quote. And they ride on the bike, make daily money, and they go and get all the girls around, do sort of fornication or whatever, and they bear a child from the, from the relationship. Those are the children that are now on the streets as Yahoo, as a ritualist, and as so the, the, the basic, the fundamental cause of this is from the homes. The homes are no more homes. Some children don't even live with, say with their children. Some, some parents, some, some children do say, grow up with their, with, their, with, with, their, with their parents. Some live with friends and foes. Some just travel from where they are to somewhere else. I met one boy the other day, at the car wash, he wanted to wash my car. A boy of about, of about 15, about 14, 15 years. I see he was a very clean boy, very decent, speaks good English, he wants to be, I said, why do you want to wash car? He said, he left home. Where is home? He left the east part of Nigeria to Lagos because really there's money in Lagos. Why do, why do you have to come to Lagos? He said, they had, the, the mother is late, the father is, is good to, to him. Then the mother, the, the stepmother is maltreating him. So he has to leave home for Lagos. Such is the condition of an average teenager in Nigeria now. They live anywhere they want because of bad parenthood, because of bad homes. So the primary uh, responsibility is at the, at, the, at the doorstep of the homes. We don't have homes again like we used to. Now, going back to the Sophia's case, I understand that the teenagers, especially her boyfriend, said he saw how to make money ritual on um, social media and the process um, of, how, of how to actually get it done. Now, let's look at uh, the positive or negative impact of social media. I know we cannot overflow it. We still have to keep talking about it. Well, well, the negatives of the, of the social media, I think, um, by and large, is more than the positive that we have in this climb. You know, despite the fact that data is expensive here, despite the fact that phones are expensive, still most of these youth have access to exotic phones. Mm. They buy data, they have they have source alternative source of, of income to browse the internet and see and uh, and see what they're not even supposed to see. So I would say that look at the issue of uh, seeing the, the recipe for making ritual, money ritual, that he got from social media. Yes, it is very possible. In fact, somebody showed, me, showed it to me. And most of these things could be misleading. You see, when you see something on social media, it doesn't mean that it's automatic or it is, it is the correct thing to do. And most of our use just lash onto it. Again, I still go back to parental guardianship of these youths. Before a child has access to a cell phone or an Android phone, for that matter, the parents should guide them. But that is lacking. In fact, some parents cannot even afford an, an iPhone or a cell phone, whereas their children have iPhone and cell phones. You can see the, 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 the result of bad, bad parentage. So the young man claims that he got the recipe for doing ritual on the social media. What is our government 
or those that are supposed to be a regulation of this 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 access that this is that you have access to what are they doing absolutely nothing you can recall that uh, when twitter had issues with the president was when and, and twitter was banned in nigeria or suspended as it were in nigeria that is when the people that are concerned in government begin to realize that ah they are not paying tax they are not doing this so many things that have got they have gotten away with most of these uh, social media platforms they have gotten away with so many things the government was not that to try regulating the social media which is like putting the cart before the horse which is very late at that time so and up to now i don't think something so, so something concrete has come in, come out from government as to how to regulate the media it is in, in other climes there is uh, there is discipline in other climes there is regulation and penalty and but nigeria here unfortunately corruption has taken over every aspect of our daily living so that is why you see that uh, nobody is asked nobody wants to know if twitter has a regulation that can post such things or facebook or whatever and people are getting away with it so it's undoubtedly we have youth that are exposed to media unduly but the government should stand up now and regulate the media but unfortunately this is not the time now because you know in nigeria here we are nearing political era all attention all eyes should be on politics rather than on governance and doing the right thing for the people okay now let's quickly go on this break and when we come back we we'll continue from there please stay with us Welcome back. If you're just joining us, the program is Let's Talk on DNC Work, and I've been speaking with Honorable Kendi Shoaga, founder and general secretary of Ugo Indigenous Entertainment's Professional Forum. And um, the topic has been ritual killings among youth. Now, going back to what we've been talking about, I would like you also um, ask you further because I actually saw on your Facebook page. Uh, the video of some teenagers, basically, I guess maybe they are even 11 or 12 or even less than that. Um, the very young boys that boggled the shop. I know it has been happening because I've covered a couple of um, stories like that at the court. But, you know, they were taken to juvenile home, like um, correctional home. Now, it is still on. I know that the one I actually saw then at um, the court in, were told that they went into one of the homes in Ibarra housing estate and um, they took a whole lot of cables. And this one now is another shop. I thought something must have happened to change. But if we have this going on right now, and the funniest part of it is that you said they have a chairman. <laughs> Please mm. help us out on this. Yes, okay, the story on Facebook, I actually did a post on that. Okay. And that actually happened again in my neighborhood, Nabi Huta. It's so sad. Um, you see, it was that, you see, when we're talking about the ills in the society, we're talking about bandits in the north. This banditry or this, uh, how do I call it now? This immoral and illegal attitude of the children and the youth is also in the South. Don't forget that one of the child that I that was talked that was spoken to it on the on the on the on the report said he doesn't live in a home. He lives in an Isla, uh, Islamic center or Makranta or Ilikewu to be in Yoruba, which means that he doesn't live in a home. Where are the parents? The parents are suddenly abandoned. They just born through away, just like they say in in in, in, in pidgin language. The two parents don't care about these children. They live with a with an afar 
that uh, is a jobless to me, and Afa is supposed to be a jobless person because Afa is not a profession. It's not a profession. So an Afa gathers up children from seven, from five years to 40 years, teaches them Islamic without food, beats them mercilessly, that they have the tendency of running away from that, uh, from the center. And these children connived, five of them, them they even have illegal, illegal, so to speak. And they went to break into a shop overnight, in the night, in the dead of the night, 12 midnight, before they were caught. Children of 11, 12, 13 years old. It's a sad, it's a sad story. But I think the government should do something urgently to uh, mitigate these abnormalities. One, the government can even, does not even have records of individuals and families. Those in schools, yeah, they can have records of those in schools. And walking the streets, like you know, you had the governor of Lagos State recently accosted two, two young children along the road, fetching water and hawking in the daytime where they're supposed to be in schools. There should be penalties to parents, or there should be discipline or a kind of regulation to parents. If you don't send your child to school, if you do something for them, send them to school. Essentially, most of the schools are almost free in, in Nigeria now. You see, you see children in the north, they will not go to school, they'll become al almajiri. The almajiris are so now grown to be the bandits and they're terrorizing the, the rest of the nation. The same thing in the South. Some of the children that, that their parents do not go to school, their parents are just merely or cadre riders or conductors or agbero somewhere. They have given their birth to children. And these children are now they are the, the challenges that a nation like Nigeria can, can has to fend for. So it's unfortunate. The government, I think the onus is on the government now to do something positive from the homes. Government has all the powers to do to regulate even the homes. You can tell all the parents, I want to know the number of children you have sincerely. Let's, have, let's, let's take census. We know the number of jobless parents, which is very huge. If, if the parents are jobless, automatically the, parents, the children will not be well to do. The, parents will, the children will, will want to fend for themselves. So the government needs to do a data and put justice in place for juveniles. Even those children that are caught going to steal. Let's make them public, like we used to do in the past. If you thief, if you go to steal, they will broadcast your name, and before you know, in the town you'll be you'll be like an outcast. Like, this is a thief who, you know, and stealing in those days is, is a bad name. Now people go with pride that uh, they are they are thieves, they are they are, they are, they are criminals, and they, there's no justice better to them. So, in the area of that, those children. What the government should have done is take them to custody. We have juvenile homes. They make them an, an examples for others. Do not go and see them. Parents, teach your children. Don't care who is not, uh, it's not, it's, it's, it's education. But it's supposed to be secondary education. We have a primary education, which is learning to read and write English because we're a of English. Your parents should be able to read and write up to a level, then learn a trade. That will make them dependent, they will de depend on that in their future. Build the future for your children. They, they should, the government should come up with enlightenment for parents to do all this. But we're not doing that. Like, we'll just pray for Nigeria. I want the Nigeria will be better, but we're not doing what we're doing the right for. Okay. Talking about regulations now, um, Nollywood as an industry, entertainment industry in general, let's look at the music uh, that is being produced. Um, the dancers in the, in the songs, you see them go naked and, you know, different things. And also the Nollywood industry, like the people where I remember um, reading a news report uh, that um, the PPR of Ogun Division was actually complaining about the movie industry that the videos they release also could ginger such a thing. And we, I know growing up, when they talk about when we watch village films, actually, it's all about a babalao, uh, uh, a, a babalao doing something or somebody going for money ritual, you know, having to go and 
uh, buy it in body parts and all. Of course, Nollywood as a, um, what would I call it? I think there's a revolution, or would I say there is a, a, a change? Because there are Nollywood movies now that, that you can watch and still, you know, you learn so much. Or like those days that we're only watching village films and it's always attached to either killing somebody, rituals, wanting to make money, wanting to destroy someone's life. Now, how do we regulate Nollywood right now? I'll tell you a very sad story. I am supposed to be a member of the governing board of the National Film and Video Census Board in Nigeria. The only regulatory body about uh, in Nigeria. But sadly, I have not been engaged in anything to do with the sector. Because, you see, government has a lot of blame in all of this. And the system is so corrupt that it swallows any diligent, genuine, uh, particular somebody that is determined to do something positive for the industry. I'm a member, I'm supposed to be a member of the board, but I can tell you that since 20, 20, 2018, the chairman of the board, Chude Kelani, popularly known TK, resigned from the board. Why did he resign? He didn't tell anybody, but he know that the man wants to win. That's why he resigned. Since 2018, we've not had a single meeting. We have not made a single quota into the development of movie and film industry. It has been run by just like a one-man show and the ministry. And you can't get you can't get a tangible result from where one man, even, even President Mohamed Buhari has ministers, he has SSAs, he has people that are working for him in different departments. That is why Nigeria is moving forward. But in that age, you have only one man running the show in the agency, which is, which is, which is an aberration. So that is one of the examples of why Nigeria movie industry cannot move forward. A one man cannot run the show of that movie sector. But it is it's being run by one man now. I have said that the governing board of any agency, of any, of any power sector or any company is to give direction is to give advice, it is to regulate and to see to the running of the affairs of the agency of government. But I can tell you that of the National Film and Business Board, since there's no governing board, how do you want there to be improvement in an agency such as that? An agency that is so touchy and so sensitive that an average Nigerian watches movies and videos every day. Even those in the villages now, they have access to the Android phones and phones in which they see films and videos and all, and all stuff. But they, 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 those, the agency does not have access to regulation. The people, are, people are, the filmmakers are just doing what they like. I can tell you for free that 50% of the films that are released in Nigeria now are not regulated. They, they, don't, they don't even go to the board or the agency and they get to the market. No regulation. No discipline, no uh, implication for flouting the regulation of the board and, 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 and stuff like that. So the movie industry is to be blamed. But unfortunately and sadly, there's no structure in the sector. I'm saying it for free. There's no sector, no, no, there, there, there's no structure, no discipline. In fact, no leadership in the entertainment sector. Uh, I recall that last year, I tried to vie for the presidency of the uh, Director's Director Guild of Nigeria. Uh, what, what came out of that is a sad story. It's another story, story for another day. But I can tell you that from that level, you know that government has a lot of impact or politics played in the politics of the Nollywood. So it hampers the development of Nollywood. When a government agency like that has influence on the Nollywood, they want to do it the way government wants, rather than regulating the things that are done in that industry. So it's so sad, it's, it is so confusing, and it's, I, don't know, I don't know, one will almost give up that the Nollywood, that people expected to do so much, is doing virtually nothing. 
The industry is growing undoubtedly, but in which area is it growing? The, the agency is an arm of information and culture. The information and the cultural uh, presentation has to go down to the real people, to the grassroots, to the boys that are the, the kind of boys that are that are going to do uh, to 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 break fences uh, to, to to break shops and do it. The kind of boys that are, the boys that are that are that are that, that are doing rituals, but rather the industry is going in the area of cinema where elite millionaires and billionaires can go to cinema and more cinemas and one watch good films that come from there. But, but the ones that are coming out in the social media on TVs on, on most uh, Nollywood movies are not really regulated. So it's a sad, it is very sad, it's a very sad case. Unfortunately, it's a very sad case. There's nothing positive about it as in, as in the agency for now, except something happens tomorrow. Okay, so I would like to say a very big thank you to you for coming on the show. It's indeed a great privilege and honor to have you. And to you out there, thank you too for coming on the show. Thank you for watching, actually. I beg your pardon. Yeah. Thank you for joining us as usual. I hope you have learned one thing or the other. Until next time, when I come your way again with another exciting topic, I remain with the Joker Bye for now.